it, it tells the story of, of what we were and what we became. The British Empire is no more, and so the d demand for new flags for new overseas territories is gone. You can't just make flags for the royal family. You've got to prove over a long period of time that you're up to the quality, up to the cut to make this, to manufacture these sort of products. To some people, they're just a piece of fabric, but they're probably the most powerful pieces of fabric in the world. It's one of the most instantly recognisable of flag designs anywhere in the world. Uh, partly because it's very ancient in comparison to most flag designs. The Union Jack, the Union flag now, is becoming a bit of a fashion icon now. So more people are wanting it, they're wanting it as a brand, and so therefore people have come to accept flags in the UK. It's the whole history of a country compressed into a single object. Until relatively recently, the idea of a country having a flag w wouldn't have occurred to people. The country and the crown, for most places, were, were indivisible. The crown was an expression of the nation. The Union flag is one of the first flags we know that actually was designed to express a state, a country, as much as it was a crown. Of course, when it was invented, it was primarily meant for military purposes. These are typical late medieval military standards. This is actually the flag of Henry VII. So you have his badges of a portcullis, a Tudor rose, and a greyhound, and a fleur-de-lis. So they're all royal badges as used by Henry VII. The need for flags in the 17th, 16th, 17th century was to communicate over distance who's the ship, who the ship belonged to and who was on board. And that's really why the Union flag was invented, because, it was, because the naval fleets needed a flag to express what country they belonged to. So this is the key constitutional document that establishes the Union flag as the flag of the United Kingdom. Uh, and it's dated the 1st of January 1801. This is the new Union flag, familiar as the design we still use today, uh, expressing the uh, Union of England, Scotland and Ireland. There's a lot of history in that flag. Basically, for those folk who don't know, the UK flag, or the Union flag, or some people call it the Union Jack, um, basically it's three flags in one. So you start off with the Red Cross, the, which is the Cross of St George, that represents England, so that's the horizontal and vertical Red Cross. Then you combine the blue sections, which is the flag of St Andrew, which is Scotland, and then we add the third part to it, which is the Diagonal Cross, which is then countercrossed, and that's the Diagonal Cross of Ireland, St Patrick. You put them all together and you get the Union flag, which is the United Kingdom. The idea of it being a national flag in the modern sense only comes along in the 19th century. 20 or 30 years ago, the national flag was very rarely used in this country. We only flew it on certain special days. Even Parliament didn't fly it every day. America and Europe are big flyers of flags. For I don't know what it is with us UK folk. We're a little bit more conservative, but hey-ho, the Union Jack, the Union flag now, is becoming a bit of a fashion icon now. We get more used to the idea that a national flag is a necessity and is part of who we are as a people and as a country. So we've assumed some of those attitudes towards the flag that we would once have characterised as being quite alien to sort of the British attitude. We once would have said, we don't need a flag, we don't need a national flag, we have the monarchy as our sort of symbol of us as a people. And there were certain events like the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, which basically got us to use the flag more. And ever since then, we have uh, used our national flag a lot more than we used to do. That's flags, it's full of history. They've all the stripes, all the curves, all the patterns, the crescents, the crosses, they all represent something. They don't just have to be for stuffy official occasions. They can be just, you know, to make your landscape look better. So people are following each other by the colour of a flag. And if you look at a, a football stadium, you can have 80,000, 100,000 in there, and you'll see the flags waving to, for each of the supporters, for each of the countries, and it's a magnificent sight to see.